What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Greedfall video. My name's Vulcan and today we are breaking down survival in Greedfall. And what I mean by survival is combat survival, battle. You know, you're gonna be encountering some monstrous creatures and you're gonna be dealing with a multitude of things. So before we get into it, for those that are unaware, Greedfall is an action RPG from Spiders, the makers of Technomancer, which did score lackluster reviews, but this game is looking to be something different. September 10th is the release release date and it's going to be launching for $50. Now, moving into Greedfall, the world of Greedfall itself is full of dangers, from mini bosses lurking in the swamp to story bosses like we see at the beginning of the game with that big kind of wicker looking creature. You take the role of a diplomat sailing to an unknown land in search of a cure. Now, you aren't a badass soldier, you're not a wizard, you're not a shaman, you're a politician that just happens to be a hidden badass soldier, wizard, or shaman. You're obviously uh, technically adept when it comes to combat, but I mean, seriously, your whole focus is establishing networks between factions through whatever means necessary. Sometimes that is upsetting the local natives and other times that is dealing with things with a blade or a flintlock. But I just wanna get some key important stats out of the way for you guys because I know some of you guys are gonna be looking through the video, trying to pull these things out. So I'm just gonna make your guys' lives a little bit easier. The game itself offers 35 to 40 hours of gameplay, not including side quests. It offers seven full story bosses, plus quote, tons of mini bosses hidden throughout the world. This game is not open world, but is instead divided by zones, which are connected through dungeons. So this reminds me a lot of Remnant, world bosses gating new areas, the levels or the zones rather being somewhat large, which Greedfall to me seems like it's going to have much, much bigger zones than Remnant had, but still the same kind of gameplay style. And the game itself has four difficulties, easy, normal, hard, and extreme. Now, Easy is built for those people who really just want to experience the story. Combat is relatively something extra that just kind of happens, but they just want to see where's the story take me. Normal is how they want you to play the game and then hard and extreme or for those people that are just badasses and just want to run through this thing and really, really put the game through its paces. In my previous video, which I linked above, we've covered the gear and skills for heroes in Greedfall. In this video, we're covering combat. So diving right into it, combat guys is a combination of magic and 17th century weaponry like flintlocks and sabers. Now combat itself from gameplay appears to be extremely agile, fluid, otherwise better than Spider's previous game, Technomancer. Now I really struggled in Technomancer. Um, the combat just was sluggish, it was slow, it felt just not good. And from what I see here, it looks much, much better. But this really all depends on how you build your character. If you spec heavy into melee, you're gonna see more of those two-hander weapons, those uh, dual-wielding rogue-style attacks. If you spec more into magic, then you're going to see, obviously, spells, guns and traps, you have poisons, you have flintlocks, all of these things. It really depends on what you want your focus to be for your particular hero. But something to keep in mind, spells cost a ton of mana. So it's wise to create a hybrid fighter rather than a pure magic user. So a word of advice from the developers, spec into firearms to use while your mana replenishes over time. You can always use melee, but if you're somebody who is more of a ranged player, go for the firearms. That way you can stay distant, you can kind of let your companions do their work, and you can replenish your mana and then continue casting spells. But overall, your toolbox consists of a light attack, a heavy attack, and four skills tied to keybinds. So you always have this quick access to melee, but your other four skills you can mix and match as you please to really kind of create that hybrid fighter that you're really looking for. Myself, I'm really looking to create like this poison rogue style character. I want to get in with my daggers. Um, there is an ability that I saw that will allow me to spec into the magic tree a little bit, but that ability allows me to, I think it's called shadow phase or shadow step, but it allows me to move quickly over through the battlefield. So you can almost teleport in and out of combat. And that's a really cool thing because I enjoyed playing that style of rogue in like World of Warcraft and other games. So that is what I'm looking forward to when it comes to this game. So look for that um, during my stream on September 10th. But 
Um, moving on, you have certain gear that will dictate certain play style. For instance, um, like I just mentioned, you can't use magic unless you have a divine ring equipped to cast that magic. So your character isn't innately magical. You have to have a piece of gear to do that. So you need to take some of your skill points and spec into the magic ring, which we talked about in the previous video. The game does offer a tactical pause that can be used to cast spells, use items, make adjustments mid-combat that you otherwise don't have quick access to during battle. And this is something that I think is going to really, really sell the game to people who are big Dragon Age fans. And as I look more and more into this game, it feels more and more like a Dragon Age style game. And that's something that I think is going to bode well for spiders. Um, but we'll have to see how the whole game kind of works out. But at first glance, this could be the game that a lot of people have been waiting for. Now, your companions are another kind of aspect of combat. Now, they're not just an aspect of combat. They're an aspect of the entire game. Um, we went into uh, companions a little bit in the previous video. I'm going to be doing kind of a spotlight video on them because there is just a ton that goes into these. But in terms of combat, they will be in your party. Two additional uh, companions while you fight to survive, right? Each one is going to offer a different method of attack. For instance, you have Soria, who is a native. She is somebody who's from Tier for D, and she reminds me of a druid, so much of a druid. She controls nature her, like itself, right? She wraps roots around enemies. She'll harness nature in other terrifying ways, um, picking up boulders, things like that. So really just anything that is nature oriented, she can kind of control or use to her advantage. On the opposite end of the spectrum, you have another companion. I cannot remember her name to save my life, but she is all about grenades, blunderbusses, alchemy, causing fire and destruction. Um, so really kind of synthetic man-made stuff. So it's really cool seeing how those two work together. And then in between there, you have a couple other melee oriented characters. So some are not always combat oriented too. So keep that in mind. If you have someone who is more of a diplomat, but not really a fighter, and you put them into combat, then they are going to be a little upset that you keep putting their life in danger. So that's something you have to consider too. Which ones like to fight or can fight and which ones cannot. But as you fight enemies, you might notice there's a little kind of armor icon above their health bar. Now, this is the armor boasted by the enemy. Different creatures have different levels, but once that armor is whittled down, you can begin delivering significant damage. Before that, your damage is partly mitigated. And we've seen this in a few cases when it came to the mini bosses, like there was one in the swamp that you guys saw earlier in this video that had um, three to four pieces of armor. And then there is another individual that is more like one of those wicker monsters and it has 12 armor platings. So it seems to be what they're actually composed of. One is composed of hard wood, uh, which gives it a little bit more armor. The other one is more of like the soft swampy lurking thing that has less armor, but more overall health. So I don't really know how this is going to kind of pull into combat. Are there going to be certain nodes or certain things that will shave off more armor? Is it your melee um, attacks shave armor off quicker than your magic attacks? Is it you have to use fire against the wicker type creatures? That way it pulls off more armor or, you know, it, it, I'm very curious to see how that all goes into play because they haven't talked about that much yet. And I think if it was just a flat number, then it wouldn't work out as well as it could. So that's something that I think we need to learn a little bit more about. But overall, guys, that is really how combat works in Greedfall. Now, as for the gameplay and everything like that, it's really going to be down to each person, how they feel about the game, how they kind of build their character, um, what spells and skills they wanna pick up, as well as their attributes and their talents. All that stuff is gonna make up your overall kind of combat experience. But overall, looking at it, I think we're in a, going to be in a pretty good spot when it comes to Greedfall combat. Things appear to be more fluid, moving more quickly, things are impactful, and it really doesn't feel like a 17th century game. It feels like this kind of 
mystical style of game. So, but I want to hear from you guys. What truly are you guys looking forward to when it comes to combat in Greedfall? We know that our main hero isn't necessarily the most combat oriented of folks, but he tends to get the job done. So what do you guys want to see? And also my next video, I want to go over sort of the other things. Uh, it's going to be your companions, some romance options that are in the game, similar to Mass Effect, and anything that we have left covering the world of Tier for D. Now, for those of you who made it this far, one, I thank you very much, but two, uh, just a reminder that I will be doing an all-day stream September 10th for Greedfall. So stop by on any of your favorite platforms, whether it's YouTube, Mixer, or Twitch, because I'm using Restream to cast all of those. So I look forward to seeing you guys there, but as always, this has been Vulcan, and I'll talk to you guys next time.